Welcome back everyone for another great session of the One Earth Live Visionary Speaker Series. I'm Chris Decker and today I'm here with my dear friend Jane Hansen from London and she is the founder of One Day One Choir, an incredible initiative that brings people together from across the world to use the power of song to uplift communities. Welcome Jane, great to have you here. Thank you very much, nice to be here. So Jane, um, definitely an amazing time on planet Earth. And first of all, I'd like to sh for you to share a little bit about your journey and One Day One Choir, because it's really an incredible initiative when I found out about it. And I'm so glad we're working together now on quite a few projects. So can you share a little bit about your journey? Yes, of course. And it's great to be working with you too. And um, One Day One Choir was literally a, a vision in 2014 that just kept waking me up in the night. And I was not anxious at the time, but worried with, with all the conflict going on in the world. There was Syria was in a really bad place. And I've been to Syria and there were wars breaking out everywhere. There was conflict even in the UK. And I thought, there's got to be something we can do that something simple. I'm just ordinary. So just something simple to help people feel a little bit better and a little bit more connected because Often when the world's in a bad place, like it is now, we feel disconnected from people. We feel we can't do anything. We're just ordinary people and, and what can we do? And the only thing I knew about that I'd done all my life, which sort of connected people, was to sing. And I'd sung since I was little. I came from a very ordinary family who were quite poor, but they sang. And, and I'd had singing in my life forever, my grandparents and so forth. And I've sung, I'm really lucky, I've sung in some amazing choirs actually. And I still sing in the London Philharmonic and I've been really fortunate to end up making radio programmes about the power of singing. And I travelled the world and I've been in Soweto and seen people singing there in the direst poverty. You know, I've been in war zones and seen people singing there because it's the one thing they could do and could share. And I've been in prisons and all kinds of places where singing was the one thing that people could do to lift their spirits and, and make them feel better and feel connected to others. So I thought, what can I do? I can't do anything. And I thought, no, everybody can do something. So I just had this idea, what about if I suggest that people sing and I pick World Peace Day because you always need some kind of special day in their communities and feel connected to other people around the world. So I thought, uh, I'll, I'll try and do that. And so that's what I tried to do. Awesome. And basically what happens is that people around the world just sing together, don't they, on that, on that day, the One Day One Choir? Yeah, well, I did try to raise some money and have a big launch concert with the London Philharmonic, which would have been really cool. And of course, I, I worked really hard and I know a lot of people, but I raised no money whatsoever. Big fat zero. However, people all said they got goosebumps when I talked to them about the idea of the project. And so every time I thought, I can't do this and I don't need to, it's not my job, I'm not paid. People said, but you have to do it. It's a really great idea. You, you must keep going. And uh, then uh, a really wonderful conductor I know, who's very spiritual, visionary, massively visionary, called Vladimir Jarosky, who uh, conducts lots of orchestras and is an amazing guy. He said, he, he was in my vision and I went to him. And I'm like, Eek! and then he said, Jane, this is a great idea. I'll help you. And so slowly, slowly, it, it sort of got off the ground and I didn't know how, but one little step led to another. And, and the principle was simple. It's like, don't tell people what to sing because, you know, it's got to be what works for them. But then um, people wanted some ideas. So we made a couple of suggestions and it was just like sing on peace day, kind of any time in the day, or if you can't do that, sing the day before or after, but just sing something on Peace Day or dedicate something you're already doing on Peace Day. So if you were in a church or a school or something, just make it really, really simple and sign up on our little website that a complete stranger stepped up and made us for free um, and just feel connected to others. And that's how it started. And then in the end, BBC Radio launched it for us. Um, it was really last minute because I never knew what was coming. And it was about three weeks before Peace Day. But 
And, and how many That's people what, all around the world? How many people joined? Like, well, it, it was a bit slow to get off the ground, but we did get some press and it just happened each uh, year on, on Peace Day. So it sort of grew. And then, for example, one chap here in England said, I love this idea. And he walks for peace. And he said, I'm going to walk around Britain and get all the cathedrals on board. And he did. Wow. And then we got <laughs> we got schools on board and we got all, you know, all sorts of groups on board. And their people were just like, they were ready for this. They wanted something that wasn't brown rice hippie but they could talk about peace uh, and we talk about peace of all kinds personal local and global peace mm -hmm. but in a peace peace starts with us so you know of course we can't sing and the world's going to change but we can make ourselves feel better about it you know and, mm -hmm. and singing does that and actually I have this little thing up here on my notice board <laughs> my computer that says that it says peace it doesn't mean to be in a place where there's no noise, trouble or hard work. It means to be in the midst of those things mm -hmm. and be calm in your heart. And to me, that's what singing does. It helps you to be calm in your heart, it goes directly to your heart. And it just brings people together a little bit. And people were writing and saying, oh, we felt really connected just because you were doing this. Mm -hmm. and, and they looked at their little map and, and, and sort of joined in. I had one old lady emailed me from the outback in Australia and saying, I'm not in a choir. I'm just an old lady with a hymn book. Can I join in? Mm -hmm. Well, of course. So we had all kinds of people. And in the end, after four or five years, I think more than a million people had joined in. Wow. We got support from people like um, the elders and the Dalai Lama, as well who the, as... Who were the elders? The elders uh, were uh, started by Nelson Mandela and they are a group of world leaders uh, Desmond Tutu, Kofi Annan was the leader of it, Ban Ki-moon, no but it's pr uh, post Gorbachev but there were these are the world leaders who feel that we need to work together for peace and unity polit politically as well mm -hmm. so they're the kind of really cool world leaders who might not be prime minister or president anymore but they have this oh, group called the, called the elders who try to take actions and make change for proper peace and political peace around the world Great. so they supported us too as well as musicians and you know it just sort of seemed to, to touch people that this is you know everyone can sing lots of people mm -hmm. are, oh i can't sing but of course everyone can sing you don't have to be a great singer you sing in the bath you sing in the car <laughs> you sing down it's the pub the it's it's so true it's the universal connection point for all yeah. of us Sing of together. I mean, it's ancient as we come. So, I mean, I know that you've dived into a little bit of the science behind singing as well. I remember having a few conversations. Can you share a little bit about like what's what's actually emerging in the wellness and scientific communities around singing? Yes, yes, of course. I mean, I always think, you know, if singing hasn't got a special purpose or point, then how come we can sing as well as speak? You know, why have we got two voices if there isn't a special purpose for one of them? And, uh, you know, you can go in a room and have people chitty chatting and, and it's a big hubbub. You can go in a room and everybody's singing and you get harmony and unity. So I think singing socially, going back thousands of years, is the center of, of mankind. And it's the center of uniting, uh, you know, humanity. People sing to their babies. They don't talk at them. They sing to them. People sing in their tribes and their groups. You sing to celebrate. You sing if you're sad. It's this special thing that, that really connects people. And the science shows that singing actually connects and unites people more quickly than any other human activity, mm -hmm. even sport. <laughs> but it, it, it does. It's got this very special connection. I'm sure everybody listening will know that, that, you know, we like singing, even if it's at a football match or, um, you know, we love hearing children singing. It's, it's a natural human thing. And there are lots of theories that say, actually, we sang before we spoke, really. Mm, I've heard that too. Uh, yeah. And when we do sing, oh, gosh, it does so many good things for us. Because first of all, you have to breathe more deeply. And so it improves uh, our respiratory systems. Uh, it then grounds us and energizes us. Uh, it improves our circulation. Th these are all scientifically proven facts. If you sing together in a group for a long period of time, um, your immune system measurably improves, uh, kicks off all your endorphins. Important uh, to know for this time. 
but totally important to know for this time, except at this time, it's not so easy to sing in a group. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still good for you to sing even on your own. You know, it, it comes from your heart, your, the vibrations in your body change. And, you know, I, I, I don't think anybody who's listening could say they didn't feel a little bit better for singing mm -hmm. or hearing somebody sing. Yeah, so right now we're a little bit isolated, of course. And are you finding that they're still singing? I mean, I've noticed there's a few singing groups online and big events. And of course, you know, you're working with, with our team with Uplift as well on, on, on a great initiative, which we'll talk a little bit more about. But what are you finding in, this, in the field right now in this online community that's happening? Um, are, you, are you finding people are just being drawn to sing together as well? Well, I mean, it's a, a massive and rapid transformation that none of us could ever have envisaged happening you know we just couldn't but some of my most um, uplifting memories from the very beginning of this was actually when people's you know of course we all still want to be connected so you know did you see the films in italy and people just went out on their balconies and yeah, sang that's together so true. that was so heartwarming and because it's what people want to do and it's the only way they could connect because singing has this magic it has this power and, and they were singing together and um, I, I'm sure some communities are still doing that. I mean, as time's gone on, it's, you know, our spirits are like a little bit like slowing down. Going, oh, my goodness, what's happening? But certainly what's happened here, and um, I have to say that England and Britain is a bit of a coral nutcase country. <laughs> we, you know, we do have a lot of choirs. I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a big thing in Britain, you know. I know it is in other countries, but, but it is here. Mm -hmm. And it's quite a tragedy for a lot of people because, you know, we've learned this week that choirs probably can't come back again for a very long time because we breathe too much. Yeah. <laughs> we breathe. And churches are going to be able to go back later this year, but they can't sing. But there's been this, in yeah, but there's been this incredible... Made this, I want to I understand it. They've actually made like, like, like a, a rule that you can't actually sing. In yeah, England. you go to church, you can pray, you can have the readings, oh, but no singing. They, it, as they ratified that. Wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. And so, but of course we want to sing and we want to feel connected. So there's been this amazing um, sprouting of, of incredible uh, online opportunities to sing. And I've been following lots of them and they're, they're from all kinds of levels. So like individual people. Mm -hmm. singing and storytelling for children those are a bit cleverer than me putting three screens together and singing three parts i've got a friend who does uh, hammock singing <laughs> she just lies in a hammock and makes these lovely three-part songs with her children but they're, they're fantastic and through all kinds of people i don't know if people have heard of gareth malone but he's huge here he got the country singing he does a workshop every day and he's teaching and there's proper music online and wow. he's teaching fun songs like you are my sunshine, but, but other bit more serious stuff. Um, great friend of mine who's been part of one day one choir for five years runs the mixed up chorus. He's got an online choir, um, lots of online choirs and other friends doing choral even song and teaching online and he's got great people like Stephen Fry involved and Simon Russell Beale and they just um, so there's all kinds of choirs the citizens of the world choir all trying to sing online I mean that's beautiful and it's good except the one thing you can't do of course is you can't all sing together online because the delay is delays, yeah. it doesn't sound good <laughs> well I, I really love the the initiative which with, we've started together. Can you share a little bit more about the, the Global Song Circle? Because, you know, that allows us to sing with our families, just to bring it home to our families. Yeah, I, exactly. I, actually, I actually did join that with my family when we did it, and it was fantastic. The girls really got into it. So can you share a little bit more of that for the global audience today? Yes, of course. So um, after Peace Day last year, I know we've got a mutual contact, and he'd been getting his workplace choir to sing. And he'd met you last summer, I think. And he suddenly said, hey, you guys, you, you need to connect because uh, Jane's running this project and you're doing Global Days of Unity. And uh, so that's how, how we got connected. And of course, the idea was to take this singing in your community idea, get people out singing every month, but to provide them with a song because, you know, it's difficult to know what to sing. So, you know, the plan was to get really great and interesting whole range of 
mixed choirs and leaders from around the world and each month to teach a new song that would be easy in your community um, to learn whether you've sung before or not, whether you're a child or a, a grandparent or everything in between. And so that, that was our plan. And we had a, a great three part round that's very simple from a community songbook called Love is Love is Love is Love. And we taught that with some gospel choirs and it launched in March. And that's when the world closed down. <laughs> so, that's when we had to put the pause button on. <laughs> but we didn't pause. We went, no. okay, right. The physical. Yeah, no, it went really well, actually. It was great. <laughs> it's it was like, really great. okay, that wasn't the plan. But let's just, you know, say, look, look, guys, we all like singing. And look, here's a song. Learn it at home. It's really simple. Just learn one line. Or if there's two of you, try and learn two lines or, or sing around and then film yourselves and share it with us so <laughs> we've not had that many films yet but we're getting more and more now yeah, um, so the the first film was all outside it was great uh, the second film you helped to get made which was in um india yeah. with this amazing harmony chorus yeah. and uh, involved with an environmental project and an environmental song um which was great, but lockdown really happened after that. So we got told off by a few people <laughs> for having the children singing because they didn't realise it was pre-recorded. Yeah. Tell <laughs> us what's happening in June, like because we're now this this One Earth Live event is going to be bringing all the energy into all the great projects that are happening ongoing, and we want to invite the world to join us with the Global Song Circle in June as part of the Global Days of Unity weekend. So can you share? There's some exciting things I think you were just sharing with me before. Well, it's all a little bit secret because we've only it's had our secret. meeting okay. today. <laughs> Don't tell anybody, but I mean, we've had a great May song because we've got this incredible group called Vultures 8 singing for us and doing it right. from home. So this time it's got to all be from home. So I've been having Zoom meetings today <laughs> saying, how are we going to do this and, and what's going to happen? So we're going to teach another song, of course, and share it with you. And a great friend of mine who I've already mentioned, Jeremy Hanneman, who's conducted many, many community choirs. He's a great song teacher. He's teaching online. He was going to make us, uh, you know, a film live because he also teaches um, law firms, some of the top law firms in the city, as well as community choirs and refugee choirs. So he's going to teach us a song from home, from his uh, front room, uh, an African, South African folk song, actually. Beautiful. But we're not going to tell you what it is because you've got to have a little surprise. And uh, one of his um, big refugee projects has suddenly received support and sponsorship from one of the top uh, singing groups, certainly in Britain. Um, they're called the King Singers. And mm -hmm. I think because they were at King's College, Cambridge. But they're this one, I think, more than 50 years. But it's not mm -hmm. the same guys. <laughs> they keep <laughs> changing. Um, but they do fantastic close like harmony work. Huh? Like the king is himself she keeps changing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They they keep changing, and I I did. Uh, yeah. So and I said to Jeremy, do you think you could get one of them to sing one of the lines, and then maybe we can get somebody else, and we can have a split screen and have three, you know, different voices, and then if you're at home, you can just sing one voice or mm -hmm. you know two voices, and then we'll we'll play it in such a way that you can sing along because we really want people to, a to learn it, but b to like film themselves, have little versions that we can share uh, uh, with others so that you, you can see other people singing and feel mm -hmm. connected and like just have a go yourself. So um, yeah, we had our Zoom today with two of the King singers. Unfortunately, one of them's broken his foot, so he's lying in bed with his leg up. But they got really motivated and excited about this, you know, and they're really like, top class refined guys. And they say, hey, this is really fun. This is really cool. And awesome. yeah, Jeremy, you could teach it. And then, yeah, I could do one line. And I, hey, let's bring all six of the King Singers in and we can do a version at the end and everybody can sing along with them and we can shake jars with rice. And they were getting really carried away. <laughs> hey, guys, like, it's supposed to be going to be quite a crescendo. Like, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, so, so th they're going to be making our next film. And of course, Global Days of Unity Sunday is also Making Music Day, which is a big global organisation. So we're hoping to get them involved as well. Beautiful. And hopefully Jeremy will maybe teach us a live version of this song on, on the weekend at some point. Um, uh, so, yeah. So, so where can people next. find out? Where do they go to find more information about this? 
Well, then go to the globalsongcircle.com. Globalsongcircle.com. Yeah. Great. They can Let's find, find us on Facebook. Also. Yeah. Okay. They can find us on Facebook. Um, Global Song Circle on, on Facebook, and the films will will be there. And yeah. we're planning to launch the, the June one at the beginning of June. So people have got three weeks Perfect to learn it. This event. Great. Yeah. Great. And there anybody go, join in and sing community. about We invite you all to join us with the Global Song Circle in June, which will be June 2021, um, weekend of the Global Days of Unity. And we invite you all to go to www.globalsongcircle.com and just learn the song there's going to be a video it's an instructional video it's super easy to learn very fun for all the family so please join us that's going to be an amazing amazing uh, event it's also um that particular week is going to be global unity week as well so there's a lot of converging happening there's a lot of great organizations coming together that week um with lots of great content so yeah we hope to hope to see you there for that for sure jane thank you so much this has been an amazing um Amazing discussion, amazing, amazing, amazing to be in the fireside chat room with you, fireside Zoom room, we call it. <laughs> Would you like to say something else to our global audience? Would you like to, some parting words? Well, you know, just singing is good for all of us. It lifts our spirits, it makes us happy, it connects us to other people. You know, if you're feeling a bit low, just singing along with something or even humming if you haven't got the energy. And humming's cool because humming... Um, actually uh, triggers our vagus nerve. So it's another bit of biology for you. And the vagus nerve is a really long nerve in your back, down your arms and your legs. And it's the, um, it's the nerve that is called the rest and digest nerve. So it's the opposite of fight and flight, but it makes you feel really calm mm. and centered and grounded. So it's just great even if you're just humming along mm. to, to get engaged and get involved. And you might not feel brave enough or bold enough to film yourself singing but learn it anyway but please everybody just have a go like sing with the king singers just have a bit of fun they, they want to get all their rice jars out of the kitchen and things so you know they're amazing singers but this is going to be cool family fun easy to sing just get involved have a go film yourself share it with us and have a great weekend and a great week singing with us thank you jane well, it was a great pleasure and honor to have you here for the global, for the One Earth Live Festival. And we look forward to, you know, just having, carrying on this amazing journey together with you. This is fantastic. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you. It's a pleasure to be part of this and be creating this with you. It's wonderful. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome. 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 Namaste. Welcome to the Global Days of Unity. From the minute that I heard about Global Days of Unity, I understood that it was the thing for this time. The incredible coming together of people, music, song, prayer, that it's like a, a massive infusion of energy into consciousness, into the world. And what I love about it is it's completely accessible by anyone, anywhere. And let's create that togetherness and that cohesion third weekend of every month. Deep inhale to the center. Today at this session, we have a wonderful panel, wonderful presenters. brings together a unity that I don't think has ever really truly been done correctly. And just learning about the initiative makes my heart warm. Put our thought into it and put intention into it. It can just be so powerful and become so huge and have such a big impact. I think what inspires me the most about the Global Days of Unity initiative is the experimental aspect of it, right? Like this thing has never been done before. We've tried so many different things. We haven't tried people coming together with a, a sense of intention and joy. Let's try something new. Let's see what humanity can be. And I'm excited about that possibility. If we send out love, then the world responds with love. So in Global Days of Unity, just imagine the consequence of a large number of people sending out wonderful thoughts of love, peace, and harmony because we can change this planet just by the thinking of those wonderful thoughts 
And in community, we re-empower each other, but we can also empower the world. I want to invite you to the third weekend of every month. Let us be together. To the Global Days of Unity. Welcome home.